All right guys, today I'm going to show you guys how I uh, mount my roller rack to my third gen 4Runner. I see a lot of comments asking me how I do this and I'll show you guys some of the uh, hardware I had to buy to uh, make it work. Alright guys, so the reason why I'm doing this mod, or why I did this mod, was because the factory crossbars are weaker and they can't support a lot of weight. And also, when I had the roller rack on the factory crossbars, it was sitting a little too high and I didn't really like the way it looked. And also I wouldn't have been able to mount my awning either if I didn't have um, this custom Z mount, I guess you can call it. So, you can see here it sits about maybe, I don't know, three inches now. Before it was like four or five or six inches from the, from the roof and it looked really funny. Um, you know, so this keeps it low profile and gave me a little bit more flexibility in mounting my awning. And I'll show you guys that um, in a second. Alright, so here's a shot of the mount on the uh, passenger front uh, of the vehicle. And you can see it is just an angle bracket, or angle, uh, I guess you call it angle iron. Um, and it's about, well it's two and a half inches one direction, and then going down it's um, one and a half inches. And then there it mates up to another piece, which you can't see as well, but let me see. So, well, it mates up to another piece that's one and a half by one and a half, and that piece sits on the factory roof rack rails. And so, uh, you need to have the factory roof rack to do this. And let me show you a little bit closer. So here you can see the two pieces that mate together that make the Z-bar mounting. And um, essentially, it's just bolted together. You can see there's three bolts that combine the uh, the two angle irons together and you know one thing I regret is getting the bolts that I got are too long you can see it sticks out quite a bit on the right there and it kinda gets in the way of that knob uh, mounting hardware that came with the roller rack but I'll talk about that a little, a little bit more in a little bit um, but on this channel here you can see all I did was I used the um, the factory, I don't really know what they're called, but underneath this rack, maybe you can see it a little bit, but it's it's the ones that came with the, ro the, the roof rack. And they are M6 thread pitch, um, I think maybe one millimeter, or M6 by one millimeter or 1.25, I can't remember. Um, but all you need to do is just use those existing ones and just get new bolts and washers for it. And um, the bolt, I already took one out as you can see to measure for you guys. It is uh, 12, 12 millimeters um, deep or long. So you don't want to get it too long where it hits the roof. And then like I said it's an M6 and then you want to get M6 washer um, fender washers as well and it's probably recommended to use some Loctite on it but I haven't had any issues um, without it so I just left it uh, so you can see I have four on each of the mounts and traditionally you would only have five on each side because you would have two crossbars and then you would have the three individual you know little knobs that had loops in them um, so you would only have five on each side but I went ahead and got more of these um, these wash or I don't know these bolt type things that go in the um, channel and just put three more in here on each side so I have eight on each side that way I can do four and f and four back there four over there and four over there and so that's pretty much all you need um, these uh, these angle irons are cut to one foot each and you want to make sure that the holes for the two pieces line up properly so that you can bolt them together and they don't you know stick out like this one kinda does a little bit but it doesn't really matter 
um, to me anyways. And then once you get four of those up, um, you can see I just used the factory roller rack U-bolt that it came with. It's actually flipped upside down. Normally this would go underneath um, the crossbar, but I flipped it upside down for this. And then it goes over two of the, uh, the cross rails on the rack. And then on the bottom, I just used the existing um, knob uh, nut that it came with. And that's why you want to make sure that the bolt that you're using to hold these two uh, angle irons together is not too long so it doesn't get in the way of this knob. Maybe I could have flipped the orientation to put the bolt going this way, not that way. And that would probably help, but then I think it probably would have gotten in the way of the fender washers. So just something to keep in mind. It's probably better just to buy the right bolt size that where it doesn't stick out too much. It sticks out about maybe half an inch, so um, but you guys can figure out which which bolt to get and nut and uh, lock washer to get so you can mount those together. Um, one other advantage of doing this kind of mount is I actually was able to use the end there, you can see, to mount that L bracket to mount my awning. And I used two of them and it actually worked out pretty well. Well, you can't really see it, but it's right there. So that worked out well. And I also used it to mount this guy. And it actually mounts on the side here, um, straight up. And this is for my flag um, when I go to the dunes. Otherwise, you would have kind of a hard time figuring out how to mount these things. So I just used an existing hole and that was good. Um, let's see. So one other thing that you need to keep in mind is, you see that the knob nut that it comes with, or the quick knob, I guess, I don't know what it's officially called, but um, it sometimes will come loose on you, and I think it's kind of been this way, um, but what you can do is use some medium strength Loctite, and that will keep it from coming loose. Because when it comes loose, you have metal to metal contact, like especially over here, like it's hitting the bracket, and it'll make a ridiculous noise, but now it doesn't. Um, one other thing you could probably do is maybe um, soundproof some of this metal to metal contact, maybe put some rubber in between or something, I don't know. Um, it hasn't really given me a, a, a problem um, when it's tightened, but when it comes loose, it does make a hell of a noise and you think your whole car is going to blow up or vibrate to death. Um, but yeah, that's pretty, pretty much all you need. So, like I mentioned, you just need the angle iron, two and a half inch by one and a half inch. Just buy a four, four foot piece. And then for mounting it to the roof rail, uh, you need another one and a half by one and a half um, angle iron. And then you put those two pieces together, like, like these two here. And I actually put um, so this this part on the top so you can't really see it, hang on so this piece here goes over here to the, it's actually on the outside and then the other piece is on the inside and then it's sandwiched together that way in case it bends it doesn't, you know, it gives it more strength um, and then the M6 bolts and the M6 washers seem to fit perfectly in here. And this thing seems to sit perfectly on the rails as well, like it's completely flush. So, and then that's it really. Oh, and a couple nuts and bolts over here to mount the two together. Um, but other than that, it's all you need. And then the rack itself. And you can see I'm running a full extension. Uh, you can see. It's the extension because it has the two uh, weather, uh, I guess, the weather guards. Because these, these, these racks are notorious for rusting, but I actually haven't had any issues. Um, you can see it's been about, I think it's been about three years almost now since I've had this rack and it hasn't rusted on me, which is good. And normally you'll see like dripping rust through these uh, seams, but these rubber, uh, I guess they updated it, the, re the new revision seems to be holding up just fine. 
So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Um, I'll put all the parts and hopefully I can get, get you guys some links to like the angle iron, the uh, the bolts, and uh, yeah, that should be it. Really, that's all you need. Um, and then these bolts here, the ones that merge the uh, two angle irons together, you can just figure that out at the hardware store, like I mentioned. You just need to get the ones that don't stick out too much because you can see here like, well maybe you can see here, um, you see the knob is right here and the bolt is right way out here and it gets in the way and you're trying to tighten it even from under here, it's really hard because this guy's in the way. So get one that's an appropriate size and uh, that should be it. All right. Well, hopefully you guys like that, and uh, if you guys want more information, just leave a comment. I'll respond to you guys when I can, and, you know, happy building.